Hey guys, Nothany Thank Tano here. Hey guys, Princeton-y Pluntano here. Hey guys, Mostheny Moss Tano here. Hey guys, Moe Church Burner here. Hey guys, fuck you. I'm here now, you little bitch. So today, we are going to review Laimiro Ryukitan X from winter of 2005. Alright, um, this show looks bad, but it also looks like something that I'll have nothing to say about, which is why I decided to take over for no, because I just, I just felt bad for him, really. Why did he do this to himself? I'm not really sure. But hey, maybe I can find something interesting to say in the first episode. I won't have to ever watch this show again. That could be a possibility. So this opening kind of bangs. Kind of bangs. And, um... The mecha designs are certainly interesting in this show. Um, there's a giant ship. I, I like giant ships sometimes. But this looks like a ridiculous parody of an anime that would be within an anime, like, like Kujibiki on Balance and Genji Ken. Like, it looks like something like that. Something that's not actually real. And I'm hallucinating. Something I noticed about this show is that, um, wait for it. Like, there's, a, there's like, sequence of shots that, like, everything is in the center. Like, this is in the center. Um, this is in the center. Um, the subject is in the center for, like, 18 consecutive shots. Um, and it's usually, uh, it's usually just someone's face and shoulders, or like you have this, um, where it's just a guy running, you have this where the door is directly in the center, you hands directly in the center. Let me tell you what's wrong with that, because you have nothing to really guide the viewer's eye around, you have, um, like, no, like, interesting, um, things compositionally happen. You have nothing. You did the bare minimum. You, you fucking put something, you put the, the most recognizable thing, the most important thing of, of that given shot in the center, and you, it's, it's part of, like, dumbing shit down because the, because the fucking viewers of the show don't, don't care about direction. They don't care about interesting shot composition. They don't care about anything at all other than seeing tits, which I just saw now. Um, which, th that's all they had to do. Like, yeah, another, another thing in the, in the center, another thing in the center. It's all in the fucking center. Um, I fucking hate that shit. Like, you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Um, and it's also, like, using, like, the most basic-ass things to, like, get us invested into something. Like, you just have a guy running, you have tits, you have, like, um, like, weird military drama, um, that is, that, that, like, and, like, is beginning to happen. Um, ah, uh, fucking hell. And now, I guess, I guess what's happening now is that all the girls are, like, are, like, having fantasies about this one guy. Um, which, you know, uh, fucking typical shit, you feel me? I feel like talking about this show is ultimately futile because we all know what this show is. It's someone who, like, as I said with the directing, no one cared about the directing. It's all, like, just this shot at forever. Um, 
And um, it's, 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 it's just a problem. There's just a problem with, like, art made under capitalism, where um, the vast majority of it is made for a profit and is made to hit that demographic so they can get that profit. Um, whether the demographic may be really large, like with Marvel movies, where it's like the largest, fuck, the largest possible reach possible, like, um, like with Marvel movies or Star Wars movies or like that, where it's just like the broadest reach you can do, or the most niche thing you can do, like this. This is for male otaku, um, in Japan, who, um... But it's still pretty broad. Of course, you have to be broad. Um, when, even when hitting a niche. Um, it has a lot of girls, a lot of different personalities, a lot of different character designs. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's like this kind of show. It was made, it's a pure product. There's no creativity put into it whatsoever. It's like, why talk about it at all? This I, I understand why No is really frustrated with this series. It's because he just doesn't know what to say about a lot of these shows. Because a lot of these shows are the same shows, just painted a different color. So that's all we really can say about the show. Like, anything you can point out, like... I guess one thing you can point out, as anime as a whole, is that... A lot of anime is really more... In, like, generic anime is more interesting than generic Western media because Japan has, like, m like more, like, weirder sensibilities and cliches and stuff like that. Um, it's just cultural differences, really. I'm sure, no, like, this is not remarkable in the slightest in Japan. But if you showed this to a normie... If you showed this show to a normie with, like, how, like... Sp like all over the place and spastic it is, then it would it would seem completely avant garde. But this is normal in Japan, so I guess there's that. I can always rely on anime to be at least more interesting most of the time than Western media, which is why I mostly watch anime when I'm looking for um, audio visual media to consume. This video is a bit too depressing though, so I'm going to do something else. Welcome to a comfy cooking video. This is no longer an anime review. I, I, I cook comfily. I don't really cook, I just make food. Um, and uh, I recommend music. I'll talk about music, I'll recommend it. Um, yeah. All right, let's get started. So, let's let's find some things to eat because it is two nineteen. Um, I like to eat lunch later, so that I can so that dinner when dinner comes, it's uh it, it's I'm not starving. I like to not be starving. Um, and uh, so for we have some avocados here. I love me some avocados. So, and it's sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm propping this camera up on the food bowl because I don't have a tripod. Yeah, this one's good. Um, so we're going to cut this baby open. So the first music I want to recommend is, um... So everyone knows, I think, I think everyone knows, if, maybe no one knows this, I don't know who, how many people know this, but, um, there's a, there's this, um, shoegaze idol group in Japan, um, that are just, their name is a bunch of dots, um, yeah, their name is literally a bunch of dots, and, um, they, they got some of we got some attention, I think, in, like, 2017, I believe. Because I remember seeing a lot about them on Twitter around that time. Um, yeah. Their whole gimmick is, like, they're an idol group, and they make shoegaze. And... Now, shoegaze as a genre is really, like, the same across, like, many bands. Um, like... 
Shoegaze is a very, like, incestuous genre. Most Shoegaze bands are inspired by other Shoegaze bands. The ones that really stand out are, like, the OGs, like My Bloody Valentine or Slow Dive. Or, like... They're like they're like people that um kind of mix shoegaze with other genres like post punk. In the case of Have a Nice Life, or um, you have like uh, even though no one really counts them as shoegaze, you have like people who like take shoegaze elements and put them into and make them into something else. Like Clouded, Clouded is a great example. Um, but um. I guess, like, fusing J-pop with shoegaze, while has been done many times before, they are a lot noisier and experimental with this. And the specific album I'm talking about, I forgot which one it's called. It's technically a an hour and a half, an hour and a half long song. But, um, it's still great. Um, it, it's, it's basically, like, a lot, like, it's part shoegaze, Part field recordings, a huge chunk of it is just really mellow, harsh noise. Um, like meditative, harsh noise. Looks like we're doing some white people shit and making some avocado toast. But yeah, um. Uh, yeah, it's like really like meditative, like harsh noise throughout a lot of it. And, um,. It's really fucking good. Like, I went to sleep to this one night. I fell asleep, then woke up to it, and it was... It's, like, something that can really just lull you in and just fill you with, like, peace and tranquility. And it's just really nice to listen to. It's just really fun and nice. It's not really fun... Like, it's not upbeat in any way. It's just, um, like, kind of like anti-idol in a way. Where it's like, idols are usually like, um, they make pop music to appeal to a lot of people, to be easily, um, like, appealable and, like, recognizable to a lot of people to kind of, um, create those, um, parasocial relationships with a wide number of people. But these, like, these idols, they're, like, they're making actively alienating music. They're making actively experimental music. And there's nothing new. We've seen, like, Jun Togawa do this in the 80s. Where she was like, um, kind of like a Marilyn Manson-esque figure. Like a horror sort of-esque figure. And she, um, she, uh, was kind of like, kind of like, created the whole anti-idol, gimmick idol sort of thing. We obviously have baby metal. Though baby idol, baby, baby metal is more so, um, like... Uh, just an idol group with a gimmick rather than, like, anti-idol shit. Alright, our bread is done. We begin this bread. Um, often. Uh, time to put the, uh, the avocado I just sliced on there. Um, some avocado toast like I'm a white college student. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, we have some everything seasoning. The camera can really pick that up. But, um, we have some everything seasoning that I like to put on my avocados to make it not taste so bland. The thing about idol groups, it's hard to decipher, like, what is an experiment f made from passion and what is a gimmick. Like, obviously a lot of them are both. But, like, you know how idol culture is. Manufactured pop stars to, for the sole purpose of money, obviously not as bad as, like, Korea with K-pop. But, um, being an idol is pretty shit. It really is. So you have baby metal. Baby metal is probably... 
just like a gimmick. Even though I love Baby Metal, I love Baby Metal's music. I drink water really fast. Even though I love Baby Metal's music, it's uh, very clearly like a way to um, get people listening. It's like, oh, they're they're cute, but they're singing to metal. Um, obviously tapping into like an extra demographic there. But dots, um, that group, do like, what are they gonna gain from making harsh noise? Like, what are they gonna gain from? Like, like they're. I haven't done much research. They're probably just like baby metal, but like, maybe a little bit more niche. Whatever. With capitalism, like, always being a factor in the creation of art. Always. Like, no matter how much you try to escape it. Always a factor because. Even if you're, like, just trying to make the art you want to make on your own free time, you still have to go to work, you still have to fund the supplies you need to make that art somehow. You know, it's always like that. So. You, you like, don't really know. No, it's always it's always a factor. You don't really know what's genuine and what's not. Who's trying to fuck you over? Because everything is trying to manipulate you. It's just a fact. Kind of like the show. Kind of like the show I was just talking about. See, so yeah, it's like poetry. I'm a fucking genius. Subscribe to Princess Plunderphonics.